Mistress, the last of the handmaidens is not among us. She has left with the exile. Left? But why? Her oath. Her reasons are unknown to me. But I fear she may no longer be trusted. We will save her if we can, but we must let her discover the exile's nature for herself. Some evils must be confronted, and isolation from it would have been no defense. Well, now that we're off that Dajaric board of a planet, I say we burn sky until we see lines. Revan summoned you, so have you come full circle to return to the Jedi. Why did you defy us? The Jedi are guardians of the peace, and have been for centuries. This call to war undermines all that we have worked for. Is Revan your master now? Or is it the horror you brought at Malachor that has caused you to see the truth at last? Jedi no longer. There is one last thing. Your lightsaber. Surrender it to us. Much defiance in that one. You are correct, Kavan. When he was here, I felt it. It was as if he was not there. Go. The war has touched the youngest of the Order. Many of them have lost themselves in battle against the Mandalorians. We have not lost a Jedi this day. You felt it. He has lost himself. He is no Jedi. He walked Revan's path, but he was not strong enough. I fear it is our teachings that may have led Revan to choose the path he did. We are not the ones who taught him. We take responsibility, Atris, not cast blame. The choice of one was the choice of us all. Revan's teacher intended no harm, and Revan had many teachers since. Yet they all stem from the same source. Her teachings violated the Jedi Code, and lead all who listen to the Dark Side, as they did the Exile. You are wrong. The Dark Side is not what I sensed in the Exile. Surely the rest of you felt it as well. That emptiness we felt. He has changed. Whatever that wound was, it was of the Dark Side. We should not have let him depart. He will simply join Revan again, or perhaps worse. What would you have done with him, Atris? Be mindful of your feelings. This is not Revan who stood before you. This one walks a different path. No, although that may come in time. We let him go because we must. Where he travels, he carries his destination with him. Malachor V should have been his grave. You saw it in his walk, and in the Force. It was as if he was already dead. No, not death. Many battles remain for that one. If what we have seen is true, but the future is a shifting thing, and he cuts like a blade through it. We should have told him the truth. A Jedi deserves to know. No good would have come from it, even if what you believed was true. 
There is still the matter of Revan, and such truths could leave us vulnerable on two fronts. Perhaps in many years, we will call him before us and explain what happened to him, and how he may be healed. Until then, he must accept his journey. But he may never discover the truth, and he will never know why we cast him out. And that is the future we must accept. These Jedi sure like their secrets, don't they? It is no coincidence. There is some larger plan at work here, and we are walking into it. This is too convenient to be anything but a trap. Those are Atris's records you have stolen. What the hell are you doing on our ship? I have come to join you. I can help you against this threat. Well, we don't want your help, or any of your sisters. It is just me, and I am doing this because Atris believes you will need help. I think the strength of the enemy is unknown, but it is greater than five can hope to defeat without aid. Indeed. But of course, what does one more matter to our journey? I have had enough of this. I will be in my chambers. Yeah, me too. I'll be in my chambers. But since I don't have any, I guess I'll just go to the cockpit like I always do. If she's coming with us, she gets the cargo hold. Might remind her how fun it is to get locked up. General. The cargo hold is enough. I assure you, there is little I need. I will attend to myself. It is no matter. I am used to worse conditions, but thank you for your kindness. General, is there a reason you don't carry a lightsaber anymore? That's not your lightsaber anymore. That belonged to someone who served Revan in the wars, not the person you are now. You could build another one, if you wanted to, but you know that. I don't know, General, but whatever the reason, you should put it behind you. I know this. A lightsaber is part of who you are. Without it, you're not complete. I think I can help you out there. I happen to know the parts you need. I spent a lot of time around Jedi during the war. None of them would let me take their lightsaber apart, but I did learn about their construction. We need a power cell, emitter matrix, lens and focusing crystal. Though I have to admit the crystal is beyond my means. Never did understand them. Those parts are fairly common. Though a Jedi once told me that it's best if your lightsaber reflects you. And if it is constructed of things that identify it as your own. Just bring the parts to me before you get started building it. I'll make sure they're usable. All I'm saying is that you've gone for a long time without a memory wipe. Most droids behave erratically under those circumstances. I know that, but I'm fixing everything else around here, so I may as well take a look at you too. What 
was that? That's what I'm talking about. That is not normal droid behavior. I am not pushing you around. I just wanted to see if there was anything I could do to upgrade your functionality. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Good. Now let's get started. You wouldn't guess it from the outside, but it looks like you've been through a lot. I'll bet. I'm all done with you. If anything comes loose, let me know and I'll put it back in place. Yes, General? Just working on the ship. I'm not sure who got her up and running, but I'm amazed she's even space-worthy. Whoever made these repairs doesn't think like most mechanics. But don't worry, I'll get everything in shape. Welcome, Exile. Is there something you need? Yes, your features, your stance. There is a calm about you that I did not notice on Telos. There is an energy about you, a lightness in your movements. It is something I have seen in only the most disciplined and revered of the Ichani Weapon Masters. Yet it comes to you with ease. 
It shows in your features. It is beautiful to see. You may ask. She speaks of you often in anger, but her movements, the motion of her hand, her eyes, do not share the anger of her words. They are only the signs of loss. It has been almost the count of ten years, yet the thought of you burns within her still. I believe that your leaving the Jedi Order may have hurt her more than she will ever admit. It is a difficult thing to speak of, to see Atris unable to confront such strong emotion within herself. You... you did not care for her, did you? Atris is beautiful and wise. I have heard that Jedi sometimes renounce the code by loving another, and fall from the Order, and there are others who keep such unions secret. That is what I have heard. I was not sure if it was something you had seen, or experienced. I see. I have asked you many questions. I did not mean to. There are questions that have gathered over years, and I did not wish to ask Atris. Thank you, then. I hope this creates some measure of trust between us. You may ask. I am the last of the Handmaidens. This is correct. I train so that one day that will no longer be true. That is not entirely correct. There are times I am... distracted. Perhaps, once having known the ways of the Jedi, you may understand what occupies my thoughts. There is much knowledge on Telos, and only one of the Jedi remain. There is so much about their ways of battle, their forms, their stances, that may be lost forever if the last of the Jedi is taken from the galaxy. To the Ichani, battle is a means of communication. It is an art, in the truest sense of the word. Stance, form, discipline, are a means of expression and communication. They speak one's heart and one's devotion to their cause. Yes, the methods you use to meet your opponents speak truer than any words can express. When you risk pain or death, there is no truer sacrifice or strength. It was to the Jedi traitor Malak. It was to the Jedi traitor Revan. When Terrace was destroyed, it showed Malak's heart through its execution and intent. It was brutal, without finesse, but showed his commitment to defeat the Jedi. Yet with Revan, there was the same commitment, but it was a subtle thing, like weaving threads in a tapestry or strokes upon a canvas. He spoke through battle and tactics in a way one could never do in words. He showed his heart at Malachor V. And finally, at the end of the Jedi Civil War. I believe he was speaking to Malak in that final battle, though few knew it. Through battle, Revan was meeting betrayal with betrayal, and showing Malak the pain he had inflicted on his master. What stronger display than death, for conveying one's sense of being betrayed by one's own student? Revan's anger must have been great indeed. I would have wished to have been there for that final exchange, and seen the truth of their conflict with each other. But to say that seems an untruth, based on what I know of the Jedi. The Force can drive others, but there is still choice, is there not? If there is no choice in the Force, then our teachings and our actions are for nothing, and I refuse to believe that is true. You may ask. Before entering Atris's service, yes, I carried a name, as all the children of the Ichani do. It is not important. 
My title and rank is of consequence, not my name. I take value in Atris's service, not in myself. We all have value in our oaths to others and the promises we make. When we make that pledge, we are pledging ourselves to something greater. When importance is placed on the self, then by such acts the galaxy is unmade. I do not know. That is a question you must ask yourself. You may ask. I am training, so that if danger should strike, my body and my reflexes will be prepared. That, and I had forgotten how long hyperspace travel can be. If I do not have something to focus my attention on, I fear my sanity will erode as well. You may ask. How many more do we intend to gather to us? This ship is not the galaxy. There is only so much room. Then prepare for an army, I think, for it seems many more will come in time. They will follow you because you are a leader. Their kind always needs such, even when the figure deserves no such obedience. Do not cloak one word within another. <laughs> friends. Do friends not follow? Do friends not form a hierarchy of their own, no matter how small the circle? Because I am not blind, that is why. I see what they see, hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the change when they speak to others. I know many things, and I know what I am not. I am no leader. I speak with a voice that will never move others. I speak with a passion that goes unheard. They obey you because you are a leader, and perhaps something more. Have you noticed what has been happening? Have you felt it in them? They echo you, either fighting or surrendering to their feelings, their loyalty, their duty. Your mere presence serves as an example to them of something to uphold or something to fight against. Watch them carefully, see their patterns, and recognize the strength in it. Influence can be a weapon, one that you may need before your journey is done. I care not which of the words you use, as long as you make use of that which you forge. That was Revan's way, I believe. It was a strength. A discussion, perhaps, for another time. Ask, and I will answer. There are countless reasons, and I have neither the time nor the patience to list them all. Do you think to turn her from Atris's will? If so, I hope your arrogance will prove true in time. But I will abide her presence. She may have her uses. Because Atris is a threat, and as much as she would try to use us against you, so may we use her servants against her. Do not see every enemy as an enemy. See them instead as an ally, whether they realize it or not. This situation may yet work to our advantage. If that is your opinion, it is noted. Is that all you wish to speak to me about? Ask, and I will answer. There is nothing wrong with my sight, if that is your question. I see all that I need, 
Though the seeing of things flesh and blood has failed me some time ago, they were distractions only. There is nothing wrong with my eyes, they simply have atrophied from use. They are adequate to distinguish shapes, silhouettes. If need be, I could heal them, restore my sight, but sight can prove a distraction. When one relies on sight to perceive the world, it is like trying to stare at the galaxy through a crack in the door. But that is a lesson for another time. You must learn to see crude matter for what it is before the veil is lifted. Ask, and I will answer. Does it matter? Of course it does. Such titles allow you to break the galaxy into light and dark. Categorize it. Perhaps I am neither. And I hold both as what they are, pieces of a whole. Know that I am your teacher, and that is enough. Or what? Shall you kill me? Hurt me? You would only be inflicting harm on yourself. Perhaps you will keep me here on this ship prisoner, unable to leave. Is that the way of a Jedi? That is enough for today, and I must rest. Ask, and I will answer. Atris herself is not as familiar to me as perhaps she should be. Yet I feel I know her, yes. Because Atris's path is one I walked long ago, and it is a chapter of my life that has been read and closed. She has taken the first steps, I think. We shall see. Surely you felt the righteous anger, the spoken judgments, the lack of forgiveness. I was a historian once, gathering the relics of the Jedi, learning the ancient mysteries. Always there were more questions. One quickly learns that the Jedi Code does not give all the answers. If you are to truly understand, then you will need the contrast, not adherence to a single idea. That is why Atris and the others blamed me, sentenced me. They believed me responsible for Revan's fall. You have already asked much. I do not wish to speak of this any longer. Ask, and I will answer. I misspoke before, and I do not wish to choose my words unwisely again. Leave this be. Ask, and I will answer. Have you never asked yourself how Revan took the Republic and Jedi beneath him, how he made them his? Ah, but to make officers turn on their own people, to bomb innocent worlds, to make pacts, Strong influence, indeed. And where did these Sith teachings come from? And why did Revan embrace them so strongly? So many questions, yet the answers are few. Oh, did they? No. Revan met no Sith Empire, yet he learned their teachings. Many have mistaken the soldiers beneath Revan, the machines that were constructed to be the Sith. They are wrong. The Sith is a belief, and what Revan formed was not an empire, but something else. Yet how he did it is curious. And I suspect the answer to that question is tied to another. How was Revan able to corrupt so many so quickly? Not a one. But we shall see where our journey takes us, I think, and see how many answers we come across, yes. Ask and I will answer. Ignorance. And perhaps they do not remember or care. It is of no consequence to me or to them. Do not let them discover what makes you what you are before you do, or the consequences for the galaxy will be terrible. Because you learned to live without the Force, and that is something that the galaxy is not ready to accept. Ask, and I will answer. Nothing more than we already know, and anything else I know would be useless. There is danger in such knowledge, even if I was certain of the ones who hunt you. Ask, 
and I will answer. You know, I noticed a glow before, but now, now it's bright around you. You've come a long way since Paragus, and despite all we've been through, you seem a lot better for it. It shows. It's kind of inspiring, to be honest. Anyway, just wanted to mention it. I think the others have noticed it too. All right. What did you want to know? Huh? What are you talking about? Oh, that. Don't tell anyone, but you wouldn't believe how many fights you can prevent by just pretending to know that stuff. I mean, it doesn't compare to wearing a lightsaber, but then again, that doesn't seem to help you much. Yeah, so what? I don't ask any dumb questions about your past, despite the fact that it keeps throwing us into life-threatening situations. Want to know why? I figure if you ever want to tell me something, you will. So give me the same respect, all right? Well, hey, thanks. But you've got the wrong guy. I'm good at shooting people, cracking wise, and pretending to know how to fight with my hands. All right, what did you want to know? <laughs> 